Oh, there you guys are. Hold on, I'll come to you. Hey guys, sorry. Working on the house a little bit. All right, so today we're talking about the camera gear that I use the most as of right now, which is June 2021. And I'm not talking about the most cinematic or the best color profile or the best codec. I'm just talking about the camera gear that I use pretty much in every video. Sometimes I'm trying to get cinematic footage while I'm out traveling. And sometimes I'm just trying to vlog myself doing some renovation. Ah! <laughs> the renovation on this house is going great, by the way. Now for my main cameras, my number one priority is reliability. I just have to have confidence in it that it's gonna get the shot it needs and not have to worry about it overheating or if it gets a little bit dusty, is it gonna have some issues? Now the camera that I'm using right now is the Canon C70 and I can tell you that I put this thing through hell and it is working great. It is definitely overkill for a vlogging camera. But when it comes to the image that I'm getting out of this camera, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's got the same sensor, the dual gain output as the C300 Mark III. But I can put this thing through anything and I have confidence that it's gonna keep on running and get the shots I need it to do. Now, quick word from our sponsor, Musicbed, which happens to be a service that we also use for just about every video. If you look at my last two years of uploads, most likely there's a Musicbed song in there. So if you love any of the music that you hear in this video, you can use it in your own project, link in description. Now, I didn't expect to love vlogging on this Canon C70 as much as I do. I got it more for uh, professional work, but you know, with the built-in ND filters and just how good the image looks, I really, really actually like vlogging on it. Yes, it is pretty massive to vlog with. So of course I have myself a lighter setup. This is the Sony A7S III with the 16 to 35 mil. I have the F4 on here because I like the optical image stabilization. It's also a little bit smaller and I like the stabilization combo with the lens as well as the IBIS I get out of the camera. So if you're doing a whole day of vlogging, this is definitely a whole lot easier than trying to hold this thing out for very long. This setup allows us to be much more mobile and let's go ahead and take this to surprise sam today <gasps> you're taking me to the avengers campus the avengers camp? no not you sam the birthday sam the og subscribers may remember where are you going two years ago we went and surprised birthday sam for his birthday that's when he was 15 and now he's 17 can you believe it's already been two years do you want to say hi to the vlog what's going on man my mom is my big camera. <laughs> Love your channel, man. Appreciate it. What if we don't even recognize him anymore? Because it's been two years. I mean, kids grow pretty fast yeah, in two years. Yeah, he's probably like six foot five right now. His, his voice is probably deeper than any of ours. So hi, guys. <laughs> Good looking boat right there. I kind of feel like we're like the older guys that crashed like the 17 year old's birthday and we're just like eating all the food. <laughs> Dylan, this is a good Tinder photo for you. Right. Quickly, pose, go. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it always like this? I don't Oh, <laughs> my A7S got a little bit wet, but I'm not too concerned about it. Sam, how beat up do my cameras get? Very. This was caked in whatever it was in your house. It's called asbestos. When I used to work as a second AC, every lens, anything we had to like clean and really take care of, but with you, it's just like, oh, here you go. And you just throw it at me. <laughs> Okay, now I'm actually concerned about this camera now. Oh. Look at that, it's soaked. You know, I always pictured boats to be more relaxing, but now my ass hurts. It's more like prison than anything else. How's your camera doing over there? Uh, it's pretty soaked, man. But luckily, none of the asbestos in here got away. <laughs> you guys look so sad and wet right now. <laughs> I might have taken it a little bit too far with the salt water one. The swivel screen is a little bit stiffer, which is no problem, but every time I turn it on, now it's saying this. Apparently, the camera thinks that there's something connected up here, so hopefully I'm just gonna wait for it to dry out, but 
good news is that it still records and everything. You feel the screen difference? Oh, dude, yeah, there's definitely it's resistance. Stiff. Yeah, I think we might have to re-lubricate that screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so good news. After a little wipe down sesh, good as new. No more error message, but I am setting a terrible example. Do not let your camera get wet. But the point I'm trying to make is that I need cameras that can survive the way I like to use it sometimes in the situations I get into. So hopefully if the camera survived me, it will survive a majority of you. Majority. But Birthday Sam did say he got a droplet of water on his mom's A7R and the LCD stock parking. So it's not foolproof. Dylan, pick your weapon of choice. Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, why are we getting these again? They look cool. Yeah, uh, it's a good point. I'm sure we'll find a good use for it at some point or another. But my third most oftenly used camera is definitely my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I mean, right now I'm on the selfie camera. Uh, let me flip it around. And look at this, looks pretty good, right? The low light's pretty decent. And I get the ultra wide, which is one of my favorites if there's enough light. And we also have the telephoto. Can we get that too? What, that, yeah. this one? Yeah, sure, yeah, why not? Like throw it yeah, stuff. let's do it. Places like this where you're not supposed to really bring in a professional looking camera or that's kind of strange. Phone works great. Yo, you yeah. really trust me. You're not flinching at all. What if yeah. my hand slips? You know, sometimes you just need a camera that'll just fit into your pocket. And there's a lot of great action cameras out there like the GoPro Hero 9 is pretty awesome because you get a screen on both sides. There's also the DJI Osmo Action, which has a lot of the similar features and it comes in at under $199. If I'm flying FPV, the GoPro Hero 8 is what I typically use because it's lightweight and I could use it with real steady. There's also the Insta360 ONE X2 and the Insta360 ONE R, which is really cool for those specialty shots. But I think the camera that I've been using probably the most often is the Insta360 GO 2, just because I like the image quality out of it. And there's some pros and cons to it, like the shorter, battery life if you have it out of the case but the image quality is good you can bring it in anywhere and you can just mount it magnetically to wherever i could just stick it onto here the case makes it very user friendly and i also like how it can magnetically attach to a pendant so that's really cool i think my least favorite part about filming with pocket size cameras is the audio quality it's usually not consistent and not as predictable i mean most of the time i'm like i think this audio is going to be good enough but if the wind is blowing in just the right direction, then I don't really trust it as much. But after I got the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I have found myself using it more and more often for vlogs and other videos. A lot of times I'm just feeling kind of lazy. I don't want to go grab my A7S. So I'll just pull out the phone and intercut it with the rest of the video. And I don't think it's too jarring, actually. You look like you were born with that ax. I already made a video about how much I love this little tripod. It's quick to adjust. And it's also very clever how you can attach it to a bunch of different places. And then with the Canon C70, I love using this Peak Design tripod. This one's carbon fiber. It does cost a lot, but as something that I use every single day, I totally think it's worth it. But there is also the aluminum version, which we also use. It is a little bit heavier, but it is also cheaper. And it also does feel a little bit sturdier. I mean, the carbon fiber is strong, but it does have a little bit more flex in it than the aluminum version. So they're both pretty good options. We use them both. Now you may also have noticed that I have two of these Rode Video Mic Pro Plus microphones. Now I tested a dozen different microphones, but these are still my favorite. I think they sound good. And also a feature that I really like is see this light right here. Not everyone even knows that they have that feature, but if you do that, then basically one level is going to be recorded louder than the other. So just in case you clip on your main channel, then it's very useful having that backup that's a little bit quieter. You have to make sure that you're processing it right, or else you're gonna end up with a stereo mix where your left channel sounds loud louder than your right. Now you probably noticed that the audio in here has been very echoey and that's not really a, a fault of the microphone, but more of the type of microphone it is. It's a directional mic and also the space. It's not treated. There's no furniture in here to absorb any of the sound. It's very bouncy in here. So sometimes I like to use something like this Shure SM7B. I don't necessarily use this in every single video, but I do use it pretty often. And here, let me go ahead and hook you up to the camera. And there we go. Now we're plugged in and hear how there's way less echo. And this picks up more of the proximity opposed to being a more directional microphone. Helps a lot if you're in a space that's very echoey. And this 
is really, really echoey in here. Now the stand I'm using is made by Gator and I just like how I can just grab it and adjust like that. And this arm itself is made by K and M. I've bought a bunch of cheap ones on Amazon and they just all slowly droop over time. I think connected to this is called a FET head and it basically boosts the audio signal coming out of this microphone because as a dynamic mic, it, it's, it's not very loud. So then by the time I feed it to the camera, which is the Canon C70, the camera sends the phantom power to this thing and it boosts the signal. If you have a very good preamp on your audio mixer, you could probably skip this. But on this Canon C70, if I didn't have this on here, the audio wouldn't sound nearly as good. It's a little bit noisy even when it's quiet. Also, you'll see that the XLR goes to the C70 with this adapter right here. This is a mini XLR adapter because that's what the C70 has. It has two of these. Now you could get the top handle on the Sony a7S 3 which will also give you XLR input so you could plug in more of these higher end professional mics. But if you're gonna do that, you might as well get the Sony FX3. The FX3 comes with a top handle with the XLRs already included. So you don't have to actually get that accessory. And this is up actually being cheaper in the long run and it's more video focused. Do I move my hands around too much? I feel like I'm always just like, Ugh! this is also something that I use pretty often. It's the Tascam DR10L and it's basically like a lavalier, but it records internally. So you don't have to worry about hooking it up to whatever camera you're filming on. And I use this mic over, I think is what it's called. I'll link all this stuff, but this makes it so I could just stick that on my chest and it's hidden. And it stays on there pretty decently until you start sweating a whole lot. And now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this microphone. Now I can just move around and don't have to worry about being close to the microphone. Sorry. Oh, I, I had keys in my back pocket and I just stabbed my butt. Ugh. Oh gosh, I should have done anticipated that. I know a lot of people like to use the Rode Wireless Go, but I just like that if I have this on, I don't have to worry about which camera I'm recording on or making sure that I'm checking the levels or anything like that. I also have this set so it records two tracks simultaneously. So you could have the second track record minus six dB or minus 12 dB under the priority track, just like the Rode mic. So you have a backup track in case you talk really loud all of a sudden, then you can recover that sound. I would say if there's one complaint I have about it, it's how particular it is with the type of memory card you use. This is the one that works. If you get one that's bigger in capacity or faster, I can't guarantee you that it'll work. It'll just do this weird card error message. It says in the manual that it can take cards up to 32 gig. I wish they made it so you could use a 128 or 64 even, but 32 gig Sandisk. And again, it's this very specific one. So I'll link that in the description. Yeah. Okay. So this thing keeps falling off me right now because I'm pretty sweaty right now. <laughs> we got no air conditioning in here yet, but that, that'll happen. Zoom also makes a lot like this, which is pretty cool because it requires in 32 bit float, which is really neat. But I don't really like the fact that the on, hold, and off switch kind of protrudes. So there's been a few times where I was trying to record audio with it and it must have shut off in my pocket because I moved around at a weird angle. But the way the task cam is designed, it's pretty difficult to accidentally turn it off. So I like the design of this. This has been my favorite so far. As so long as you get the right memory card and you're not too sweaty for this tape thing. And we finished the renovation. Check it out. Looks much nicer, right? Like you, it's like you can't even tell that it's the same place. I'm just kidding. My mom actually is visiting and she booked this Airbnb for the day. As much as I love this Canon C70, which you can kind of see in the reflection right there, there are still a few flaws with it. I think the biggest issue I have is that the autofocus isn't as solid as the A7S III. Now it is good Canon dual pixel autofocus, but I have noticed that the dual gain output sensor out of this C70, as well as the C300 Mark III, it does tend to do a little bit of hunting as soon as you go a bit underexposed. If I'm using the autofocus, I do tend to go a little bit more on the overexposed side, just to make sure I'm locking in that focus. Another thing to keep in mind is that the C70 is not full frame. So you can kind of see that I have a speed booster on in there. And the speed booster is great at giving it more of the full frame look as well as the shallower depth of field as well as more light. So I do like it, but it does sometimes give me this weird colored flare. I don't know if you can kind of see it right around there. It's a little bit purple, but you know, if you keep the lens in the shade with a matte box, you're probably less likely to see it. This is something I only noticed with this speed booster, but if I'm using RF lenses or a different adapter, I'm fine. Now the A7S on the other hand, it's already a full frame, so I don't need the speed booster, but I think there's one downside of that camera. I think it's just not that pleasant of a camera to use. I mean, they've been working on their user interface and just trying to 
make it more user friendly and more pleasant to use. I have such a good time filming with this Canon C70. I look at that screen and go, oh, this is such a nice shot. But looking through the little LCD on the A7S, I'm just like, ah. Uh. But usually by the time I download it and look at it, I'm like, okay, this shot's actually pretty good. Dylan, how do you like your office for the day? It's cool, I got a nice little plant. I got a table, uh, I got a wall to stare at. It's everything I ever wanted. Now, I don't really fly a drone in every single video, but I do keep this Mavic Air 2S in my van pretty much at all times. I think it's a really good balance between having a very convenient, easy to fly platform, but with good image quality. It has that one in sensor. Now, I did have one issue with it when I was filming for a Veritasium video out in the desert. It had this really strange, weird vignette, and I haven't been able to recreate it since that one day, but pretty much all the shots had this strange green tint around the corners, which I wasn't so into, and I'm not sure if it was because of the setting I was filming in, which was D-Log in the highest resolution, but also I had the highest density ND filter that they shipped out with the Fly Market. And I've literally flown it again with the same exact settings and the same exact ND filters and I haven't been able to see it again. So I'm not exactly sure why, but it did suck looking at all the footage I shot that day and seeing just like this green surrounding edges. It is also very important to remember that you don't have to actually dump all this money into your camera gear. I mean, the first year or two I was vlogging and making YouTube videos. I was mostly on the Canon M50 and there's nothing that I really can't do with that camera that I need this camera for. I mean, obviously I love the dynamic range. I love the performance. I love the 10 bit log. I do think I'm gonna start making more videos on this channel about more of the affordable gear too because not that many people really want to spend $3,500 or $5,000 on a camera. Not everyone's as insane as I am. So yeah, definitely some entry level camera videos coming up soon. Now I think there's one thing that I've been doing actually every day that really, really has changed my life is starting a morning routine. I never thought I'd be the type to be like, oh, morning routine, oh yeah, look at me making my bed. For those of you who watch the vlog channel, you know how much I'm obsessed with the morning routine right now, but this is something that I'm gonna stick to. I'm gonna continue doing it for as long as I can, until I'm dead probably. But I have never felt more organized and clarity, and I'll tell you why you should do a morning routine. It's because you got so much going on in your head, and then you just start programming yourself to take care of a bunch of, of those like tedious things in the morning so that it frees up your brain, and then you can get into the creative zone all day and not have to worry, oh crap, I gotta do the laundry, oh I gotta get gas. You kinda just get ahead of those steps, and then you get to relax, and when your brain is free, then that's when you really can like get creative or get in a editing zone. You know, when you go into an edit, it's hard to snap out of it, go take care of something and snap right back in the edit, right? It, your brain goes into that zone and it's very hard to dip in and out of it really fast. It's like a, a highway is how I describe it to Carrie. I honestly am shocked at how much it is helping me feel like I'm not behind anymore. I used to feel like I had no time to do anything and now I feel like I'm ahead. I'm proactive instead of reactive. So I, like, I can't express how much that has helped me. All you gotta do is just start off by making your bed every morning. And then you start just adding stuff to it. Like I spend 20 minutes a day doing all my emails right there in the morning. I also put a fresh battery memory card in all my cameras in the morning. So I don't have to think about these things. I'm never running out of battery anymore. It's crazy. But anyways, since we had a sponsor for this video, we get to fund an idea. And we actually had Birthday Sam pick out our very first funding project. Yeah, so it's gonna be about a short film that is about the struggles in our country about a quadriplegian people. So the person who wants to have this funding um, has their wife who was paralyzed in a car accident. So um, seeing how hard it was for that person, they definitely just wanna um, show that world and kind of like open it up. So I think that's really important and I think that's really gonna help that person, you know, make something great. So congratulations to Jay Cole for sending in that submission. We'll be contacting you to send you some funding. I was excited. Oh, for the green light thing? Yeah, I mean, oh, is that cool? People yeah. call it in the comments the potato farm. Isn't that funny? <laughs> We'll do that. We'll go with that. Potato farm. I love how the comments does all the thinking for me so I don't have to come up with a name. You guys come up with the best ideas. I love reading the comments. They do come up with really good ideas. Yeah. But anyways, we've been staying busy. We're, we're moving in less than two weeks, right? Like a week and a half maybe? Don't remind me. <laughs> uh, the house is, this is the first not quite packing, ready. by the way. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm excited though. Lots of interesting stuff happening. Oh, hey, I like this shirt. 
<laughs> but before we wrap it up, a few more things I use pretty much every day. This is my daily use bag. It's made by a company called Hex. There's nothing super special about it, aside from the fact that I, I like the design. I've used it for a while. The quality has just been really solid, but there's a lot of great camera backpack makers out there. Nomadic makes really good backpacks. Think Tank makes really good backpack. Now, in terms of ND filters with the C70, obviously they're all built in, so I don't need to carry any, which is great. But with the Sony, I carry around these. These are Freewell magnetic ND filters, and these aren't variable. Now, variable NDs like the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro ones are great because they're super convenient, but I generally like like to use the simple ND filters with just one layer of glass. And this is way more inconvenient because I have to carry out multiple ND filters for every size lens. But the reason why I don't use variable NDs is because they have polarizers and that's just how they work. And a lot of times polarizers can kind of skew the way the sky looks in certain areas. Some parts look darker or monitors or screens or displays, they can look a little bit funny. So I just like the cleanness and simplicity of just having one piece of glass, which is often preferred. But the reason why I like these in particular is because you attach a magnetic ring adapter onto here, and now I can just drop the filter in and it just stays on there magnetically. And since I have to go through the hassle of carrying multiple per strength, since these aren't variable, I basically have a lens cap up front and they all magnetically attach to each other. So I have my different strength and they just kind of all attach. And in the back here, I just use a clear magnetic one that I attach there. So now I can just put it in my pocket and not have to worry about the filters themselves getting scratched or fingerprints, all that stuff. I just toss this in my bag. I have a set in 72 and 82 because that's where most of my lenses are. But I also carry the step rings for the odd sizes. I think that's about it, huh? We went through a lot and I was just gonna throw it all down there in the description. They are all affiliate links. So if you buy anything down there with the links, then I get money, which I'm gonna need because we bought a house. So, you know, mortgage stuff. So I appreciate it. But yeah, I'm so excited to see how that project is gonna turn out that we're funding. I think it's a great, powerful concept. So that's gonna be really awesome. And we're gonna be able to fund another project in, in just a few days. Insta360 wants to sponsor a video. So if you have a concept that you can shoot around an Insta360 camera, definitely fill out that Google form down below because I wanna fund your creative ideas and projects. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.